Today on Beerless TV, how long can you store a salt mix? Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of the BRS TV 52 FAQ, where each week we answer some of your most common reefing related questions. This week we're answering Drum for Life's question, does salt mix have a shelf life or expiration date? Example, buying the salt and putting it in storage to mix it at a later date. This is important because a lot of reefers like to both buy a lot of salt at one time as well as mix up large batches of salt water and use it over time. I think the incentive to buy large volumes of salt was largely driven by free shipping thresholds. Now that most of the industry ships straight up free all the time, the desire to store a bunch of old salt in the house is probably a bit lower. However, a good sale might still be a solid motivation. The answer to today's question is no, I'm not aware of any salt that isn't shelf stable almost indefinitely as long as you have a tight fitting lid on the top. It's not truly indefinite because over time all of them will absorb moisture from the surrounding area and while the moisture resistant bags and buckets will largely prevent that, in a long enough timeline moisture will get in and brick up the salt mix which is undesirable. So if you're storing it long enough for that to happen with the particular brand you're using, I'd either store it in a lower moisture area of the home, make sure that you're getting a really good seal when you're closing the container, or start buying less salt so it doesn't last as long. But overall, storing dry salt for prolonged periods of time is not a big issue for most people. Related to that, how long can you store salt water after mixing? I think there are different vantage points on this, but I think everyone will agree that best practice would be using it shortly after mixing, meaning mix it for a few hours or the night before you intend on using the salt water. There are two reasons for this, precipitation issues and preservation of organics. Precipitation being the number one most people think about, which is all the calcium carbonate crud that builds up on the mixing pumps, heaters, and sides and bottoms of the saltwater storage container. This is not only a mess and causes more maintenance, but also reduces the calcium and alkalinity levels, which is pretty undesirable for most reefers. If you do want to mix up larger batches of seawater and store it for prolonged periods of time, it's best not to heat it during that storage because warmer water will always have more calcium carbonate related precipitation issues. This is largely related to the fact that higher temperature seawater generally has more available carbonate in the water. Most of the alkalinity in salt water exists as bicarbonate and carbonate, and the only significant difference between the two is one has a hydrogen attached to it. In reality, it's really only a temporary existence, and the carbonate and bicarbonates are constantly switching back and forth between each other. The net sum of how many exist as carbonate and how many as bicarbonate at any particular moment in time is based on the pH or acidity of the water. One of the elements at play here is hot water generally has less carbon dioxide and resulting carbonic acid than cold water, which has more. So warmer water will result in transitioning a larger portion of the bicarbonate in the tank into carbonate. The more carbonate in the tank, the more calcium carbonate precipitate there will be. If that all sounded like a science class, just know that in most cases, storing your salt water cold will likely result in less precipitation. But honestly, this sounds like a fun episode for BRS TV investigates to see what the real impacts are on calcium and alkalinity levels from storing salt water at different temps and in different environments. Outside of that, there's a second reason to use your salt water fairly quickly after mixing, and that's organics. Organics come in two forms. First, it seems like a majority of the salt mixes out there these days are very intentionally adding organics like vitamins, E, amino acids, or carbon dosing elements. Many reefers value these additives and are selecting the salts for this very reason. There's also likely unintentional organics from the source material of the salts. Almost all the salts out there either contain mined minerals or evaporated salts, which both have some amount of inherent contaminants, including organics. Even some of the salts that claim to be synthetically processed pure salts are frequently not 100% synthetic, and they may only be referring to the sodium chloride, which is a primary ingredient. Some salts are obviously better in this regard than others and use higher quality raw materials, but it's hard to know for sure. And while I won't say the most expensive is inherently the best, I will say in most cases the lowest cost anything is generally using the lowest cost raw materials as well. So why do organics matter? Well, they can feed bacteria, which can consume much of the oxygen in your saltwater storage container and potentially could result in subtle amounts of nutrients as well. As long as you have a normal size water change, neither of these things should be significant issues. However, if you're intentionally buying a salt mix with nutrients beneficial to corals, it makes a lot of sense to use the salt relatively soon after mixing it to get the most benefit. 
A commonly referenced solution to that is to use a pump to keep the water mixed and promote gas exchange, which will maintain the oxygen in the water. However, with a normal size water change, this might not be that big of an issue. And if you're really concerned about it, the best solution is to mix the salt and use it fairly soon after. The rest is just workarounds. So almost all of us have stored salt water for pretty long periods of time and been just fine. None of this is going to make or break a tank, but I think we might be somewhat surprised if we measured what was really happening in each of these cases related to various salts, temps, and flow. I've already added this to the BRS TV Investigates list of topics, but if you'd like to see it prioritized at the top, let us know in the comments, or even better, join the larger conversation on our Reef to Reef thread. The link is pinned down below. As always, if you enjoyed today's fact and would like to see more, hit that subscribe button and give us a quick thumbs up. Even more importantly, let us know the questions that you want answers to in the comments. See you next week with another BRS TV 52 FAQ.